Hello everyone. Here is another artwork that I've created. I call it Cool Spider. It's a portrait of Spider-Man, one of my favorite comic book characters. Spider-Man first appeared in the comic book Amazing Fantasy number 15 in August 1962. The idea of the character about a teenager who is shy and socially awkward but has superpower was created by Stan Lee. Stan then approached Jack Kirby to come up with the visual design of the character. Kirby came back with a few pages, but Stan didn't like it. He thought Kirby made the character too heroic. Stan then approached Steve Ditko, and Steve created the look of Spider-Man that we know today. It was Steve's idea that the character should wear a mask to add mystery to the character and to hide a boyish face. Spider-Man was an immediate success. As time went by, Stan Lee's reputation as the creator of Spider-Man grew, and Steve Ditko probably resented it. There's been debate on who should get more credit in creating Spider-Man. Stan Lee or Steve Ditko? My personal opinion is both men should share equal credit and here is my reason. Stan Lee could come up with the idea of a character but he couldn't visualize how the character would look. He didn't like how Jack Kirby drew Spider-Man. If he got a hundred other artists to draw it, he might not like them all and Spider-Man might not have been created. Now with Steve Ditko, yes, he was able to draw and create the character Spider-Man, but if Stan Lee didn't give him the idea of the character, would Steve Ditko come up with the visual concepts of the character? Give Steve Ditko and other writers a hundred tries and they probably couldn't come up with that character. This is why both men deserve equal credit in creating Spider-Man. But they each felt they deserve more credit than the other in creating the character. But there is a much bigger picture that both of these men missed and pretty much every artist and writer missed during that time period. When Stan Lee and Steve Ditko created Spider-Man, they were both working for Marvel Comics. Their jobs were to write, draw, and create comic books. In exchange for their services, they would get a paycheck. So when they created Spider-Man, they may get credit for creating the character, but they didn't own the character. Marvel Comics did. Spider-Man belongs to Marvel Comics. Independent writers and artists owning their own characters in the 1960s in the comic book industry were not common. So when Stanley and Jack Kirby created the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, and the Incredible Hulk, Marvel Comics owned the rights to them or its intellectual properties. If the company is nice, the creators may get residual earnings from future revenues for their creations. That is how the comic book industry operates. Fast forward years later to 1984 when a young artist finally got his first job with a comic book company to draw after years of trying to get into the industry by submitting samples to them. Soon after that, he was drawing for DC and Marvel. Eventually, he was assigned to draw Spider-Man in 1988, where he really shined. The artist's name was Todd McFarlane. Todd redesigned Spider-Man where his eyes were larger, his webbing were more elaborate and detailed, it was later dubbed spaghetti webbing, he drew the poses more dynamic, in essence, he made Spider-Man look very cool. 
wanting more creative control and to write his own storyline, and Marvel wanting to keep their talent, McFarlane was offered his own Spider-Man title to draw and write. It was a big hit, but he soon clashed with the editors over the tone and mood of the storyline. Fed up with the creative restrictions, McFarlane got together with fellow artists Eric Larson, Rob Liefeld, Mark Silvestri, Jim Lee, Wills Potasio, and Jim Valentino, and together they went to Marvel and told them they were leaving. These were top talents in Marvel, and they were leaving all at once. The seven artists founded Image Comics, an independent company where creators get to own their own intellectual properties, or IP. McFarlane created Spawn, a character he created when he was a teenager. What gave McFarlane an edge was his business mindset. I believe he realized the value of IP. That's probably the reason why he didn't create Spawn and turn it into a comic book when he was working at Marvel, because he knew if he did, then Marvel would own Spawn. He waited until he left Marvel before bringing Spawn into a comic book where he owns the character outright. The first issue of Spawn was published in May 1992 and sold 1.7 million copies, an unprecedented amount for an independent comic book. McFarlane has created over 300 issues of Spawn since then, also a record. He has branched off into toys, movies, animations, and music videos. So why did I create this artwork? I wanted to pay tribute to Stan Lee and Steve Ditko for creating the iconic character Spider-Man. I wanted to thank Todd McFarlane for making Spider-Man look so cool. I based this artwork from the instructional video he made on how to draw Spider-Man on YouTube. If you want to learn how to draw Spider-Man, you can learn from the man himself. I also wanted to thank Todd McFarlane for branching out and staying independent. It is an inspiration for all artists and creators who want to keep and control their own intellectual properties. Being independent has its challenges, but at least you own what you create. For all you artists out there, Keep creating. Maybe one day you will create a character just as cool as Spider-Man. Hopefully you get to own the character as well. <laughs>